begin today the Gemara on Daf Mem Ches, Samad Aleph, eight lines down from the top of the Yamad, where it says, Moisiv Rav Yehuda. So the Gemara here is discussing the uh, halacha that Rav Huna said, Tal Yuhu Vizavin Zvini Zvini. That if you hang someone or you force him in any way to sell you a property, then even though he was forced, but you paid for it, and the sale goes through. And the Rashbam explained the reason is because the person is, is not happy about this, but the fact that he's alleviating his pain, that he's being forced to do this, and the fact that he's getting paid for this as well, is enough of reason for us to say that after the fact that he was forced, he decided, let me just go ahead with this. And therefore, we have here a, a sale with a consent, and it, and it takes effect. That was Rav Huna's halacha. On this, Maisiv Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda asks from what it says in Abraisa. Get hamo'use bi Yisrael kosher. A get that someone is being forced to give, and it's be, he's being forced to give this by, by Yidin, by a Bezdin. So this get is kosher. We're talking about a situation where the Bezdin forces a person to give a get because the Bezdin sees a situation where this woman cannot live with this man. So such a get is kosher. Uba'akum, however, if he was forced by Goyim to give this get, puzzle. The get will be puzzle. And that includes even in the case where the man says, after he's being forced by this guy to give the get, right, saying, yes, I'm ready to give, I'm ready to give. So he expresses that he's ready to give, but because he's forced by Goyim, the get will be possible. Now, if it's Goyim that are forcing him to give the get, so if they're hitting him, if they're forcing him to give the get, they have to say to him, that you should do what the Yidin are telling you to do, meaning that the Goyim are sort of being hired, and they're just doing it, for the Bezdin, for the Eden, that the Bezdin says that this person has to be forced to give a get, then the get will be kosher. But if it's just Goyim that are forcing him, even if he says, yes, I'm ready, I want to give the get, the get will be possible. So the question is, why should it be possible? Even in the case when Goyim are forcing him to give the get. Awesome, Nami, in that case by the get as well, name it, shouldn't we say the idea that Rav Huna says regarding a sale, Agav say now that he was forced, then he's under the rest, and he's this pain here. Gomar Amagadish, he, he makes up his mind, you know what, let me get it over with and let me give her the get. So here the Rashbam explains, just like we say regarding a sale, where a person is forced to sell because this pain and he wants to get rid of that, and he's not losing anything because he's getting paid for the property that he's selling. So we say that now that he's selling, he made up his mind, let's go through with it. We should say by the get the same thing, that because he's being forced and he's not losing anything, he has here a wife that's not interested in living with him, obviously. There's no relationship between them and he hates her, she hates him. So there's nothing that he's losing with this. So if he's going to say, right, Sani, in such a case, it should be considered a, a, a real consent and the get should go through. Mm-hmm. Why is this any different? Omar Av Mesharshia. Oh, sorry, I missed two words. So the Gemara mm-hmm. says, we learned explaining that price there, Omer of Mesharshia, that Mesharshia said, Dvar Taira, that really Menatayra, Afilabakum, even a guy that forces a year to give a get, kosher. The get really is kosher. Omata Momro Baakum Posel. What's the reason why it says that by Goyim, when Goyim force a year to give a get, the get will be posel? Kedei shaloi tehei kol achas va'achas. So we don't want what what could happen is that a woman that's not happy with her husband and her husband is not interested in giving her a get, so she shouldn't now go hayleches v'toy la'atzmen be'yadakum and hang herself or create some kind of relationship with the guy and even an inappropriate relationship with the guy and then have this guy help her in forcing her husband to give a get. And like this, she'll force her husband to give her a get. We don't want a guy to get involved there, and then a woman will end up using a guy for such a kind of purpose. So Chacham decreed or instituted that a guy that forces to give a get, it, the, the get should not take effect. But really, like the Swara that Rav Huna said before, by a sale, that once you're forced, the sale takes effect, by a get, the same thing should be true as well. Here is just a Takonim de Rabbonim. Moisiv Rav Amnuna, Rav Amnuna asked on the halacha of Rav Huna that said that when you're forced to sell, and this the sale does take effect, the Mishnah says, and this was quoted before in Dachmim Zayin, Lokach misikrikin, a person bought a property from a sikrikin, the sikrikin were going in the times after the Chorbim of the Besam Mikdash, the Romans, that there were bandits that were forcing Yidin to sell them properties, and they were threatening them, if you're not going to sell me, then I'll kill you. So someone went and bought a property from this sikrikin. So it's not his, the, secret, the property belongs really to another Yid. 
Now, but then, Bechazar Velokach Mibalabayas. The person that bought it from the Sekrikin knows who the real original owner of this property is, and he goes to the Yid, the owner, and he buys it from him as well. Mekhe bottle, the sale is null and void. So the question is why? Vamai, Hosam Nami name it. Shouldn't we say there as well? Aga Voinse, Gamaro Makne, that this Yid, true, he's only agreeing to sell you the property because he's forced to because he's afraid of this Sekrikin that's threatening to kill him if he doesn't agree to sell the property to the seed that's buying from the Sekrikin. But why don't we say, like Rav Huna said, that since money is being paid here, so he's selling under the rest, but once it's sold, it's sold. And says the Gemara, it's not the Ha'it Ma'ala, we already learned and explained about this, and the Gemara quoted this already all before in Daf Mem Zayin, that Omar Rav, Rav said about that Mishnah, Loi Shanu, this Allah that was said, that if you buy from the Sekrikin, and then you go back to the owner and buy from him as well. You pay him for this as well, but it's actually not in a case where you pay. Rav said, That all you got is from the owner a consent. He says, go, go make a Kenyan in the property and go and buy it. But you never paid him for it. Then we say that the only reason he's telling you go and buy it is because he's afraid of the, of the Sekrikin. So he's giving you, he's giving you the shush to go and buy <laughs> but Rav said, if this Balabas, the Yid, writes for you a document that he's selling you the property, Kana, then you will acquire the property. So that fits with what Rav Huna said. If it's written in a star, you acquire. So Rav Huna says, if you pay, then you acquire. So we could say it fits with what Rav said, that only if he just tells you, words, those words he's saying because he's being forced. But once it's written in a star, you will acquire. Hmm. The Gemara goes on, but Shmuel, as quoted before already on Daf Mem Zayin, Shmuel disagrees with this. The Omar Af Bishtar Nami Lekana, even if you go back to the Balabas after you buy it from the Sekrikin, and the Balabas writes you a document that he's selling you the property Nami Lekana, even not going to be, you're not going to be kind of then as well. Michael Meimar, why aren't you kind of according to Rav Huna that says that once you pay, you acquire the property, even if the person selling is being forced? So the Gemara again explains. Shmuel would admit to the halach of Rav Hone if there was money paid. All Shmuel said is that not only if the Balabas tells you, go and acquire it, even if he gives you a star, you'll also be kainer. You also, sorry, will not be kainer, that is, because we know that he's doing it just by force. But in, in a case where you paid for it, in such a case, Shmuel would agree to what Rav Hone said, that you will be kainer. But now the Gemara brings Olerav Beivoy, again, this is all from Daf Mem Zayin, and Rav Beivoy there said, the Messiah Be Mishmei de Rav Nachman, that he concluded and said in the name of Rav Nachman, and this is a statement that the Gemara before brought from Rav Nachman, that a Gazlan, there's no Chazaka for a Gazlan. A person that we know is a Gazlan, the Gemara before explained how we define this, uh, the, to know that he's a Gazlan, so he has no chazaka that he could establish on a property. Even after he was there three years and he claims that he bought it, there's no chazaka. And Rav Nachman went on to say, this Gazlan, even if he's going to bring you proof that someone sold him this property, he'll bring you Adam, he'll bring you a star that this property was sold to him, we're still not going to believe him because he's a Gazlan. And therefore, the one that sold it to him was under pressure. So, so therefore, this, it's, it's worthless, any of these proofs in the case of a Gazlan. Now, that, that was the statement of Rav Nachman. Now, Rav Beivoy continued and said in the name of Rav Nachman that Karka Einloi Mois Yeshloi. That if there's Adim, that he paid money for this uh, Karka that he bought, so the Gazlan has, has Adim that he paid. But nevertheless, because he's a Gazlan, we know that he, he, that he bought it by force, and therefore he's not, he can't keep this Karka that he bought. He's going to have to give back the Karka, and he's going to get back his money. That's what Rav Nachman said. So we clearly see. What can we say? We clearly see here that Rav Nachman holds that even when it comes to a case of a Gazlan where we have Aiden that he paid for it, nevertheless, the sale does not take effect. According to Rav Hone, once you pay, because the, the person, the, the seller, is getting mm -hmm. money, even though it's by force, but there's a consent for the sale and therefore it does take effect. So the Gemara says, Rav Beivoy Memrehu. Rav Beivoy is saying over a statement that he heard in the name of Amiroim. So you can't ask a question from what Rav Beivoy said, being an Amayra on Rav Hone. Umemre le Rav Hone le svirle. And Rav Hone, which was also an Amayra, does not agree to what Rav Beivoy said. This is not an argument. Amarave, so Rav says, Hilchese, the halacha about this case is, Tal Yuv, Vizovin. If 
you hang someone, you force someone to sell you something, zvine, zvine, the sale takes effect. It's not only the case of Talyu, any kind of case where you have a person that's being forced to sell, but if he's paying for it, the sale takes effect. Now the Gemara says that there could be uh, limitations to this. But for lo, yamada, on this, Allah wasn't said, Ela besadestam. Only in a case where a person is being forced to sell a, a property that he owns. And the one that's forcing him did not specify which property he should sell him. Ava besadezu. But if someone's forcing you to sell a specific property, then lo, in such a case, a person, when he, when he agrees to sell, we don't consider it to be a proper agreement. When you're giving a person the option to choose which property to sell you, even though he's being forced, but he chooses to give you a property that he doesn't need or he doesn't use, so then we say that it's a good sale. But if, he, if you're forcing him to sell me this house right here, and this could be his house that he lives in or that he wants, then in such a case, when he agrees to sell, it's just by force and it's not considered to be an agreement. Now, this that we said, that when you're forcing a person to sell a specific house or a specific property, that the sale will not be a sale. Nam so this is only not this is what wasn't said. Ella de arti zuzi. Only if we see that the, the seller is not counting the money. Avol arti zuzi. But if we see that when he gets payment, he's counting the money. Loy. So then this is what this is not said. Meaning that then we'll say even if he's being forced to sell this specific property, we see that he's counting the money and therefore he's he's taking the money and it's not a loss for him and the sale will be in effect. Furthermore, Velo Yamada on this that we said, that when he's not counting the money, that the sale will not be in effect. It's only in the case where we know that the seller couldn't have avoided selling this. He's, he's cornered and he's pressured to sell and there's no way that he can that he can get out of this. But if we see that it's a situation that if he wanted, he could have somehow avoided or delayed this and he wasn't mamish forced to sell, and, and he's going ahead and selling, like, so then we're not going to say what we said, that if he's not counting the money, that the sale will not take effect. We here in this case, because if he could have avoided this, and we see that he's going ahead with the sale, it's a sign that his consent is, is real enough that the sale should take effect. Now, those are the limitations that the Gemara says about this halacha of a person that's forced to sell. But however, the Gemara concludes, the halacha actually is, in all these cases, the Hava Zvine Zvini, that a person that's forced to sell, the sale takes effect. And Vafila Besadezu, even when a person is being forced to sell one specific property, nevertheless, he's getting paid for this, and the sale takes effect. And the Gemara brings proof of this the Ha'isha Kisadezu Damya. A woman is like a case of Sadezu, meaning if a man comes to a woman and he's forcing her to marry him, and he's giving her, he's being Makadasha with Kesef, and she's getting sort of money in exchange, but now he's forcing her to marry him. So that's like Sadezu. There's no option over here of one property or another property. He's forcing her to marry him. There's, there's no options about this. And nevertheless, what's the Allah in a case when a man forces a woman to marry him? Oh, but Ameimad, and Ameimad says about this, Talyuhu v'kaddish, kiddush of kiddushin. That a person that forces a woman to marry him, and when he forces her, she says, right, Sani, she, has to, she expresses and says that, yes, she's uh, ready to marry him. So even though she said that she's ready to marry him because of the pressure and because of uh, him forcing her, but once she says that she's ready to marry him, the condition takes effect. She's getting money in, in exchange. And uh, it's, it's similar to the halacha of any sale where the, even though it happened by force, but once there's an agreement on behalf of the meicher, and in this case, there's an agreement on behalf of the woman, the sale takes effect. So you see over here that if this is a... If this is a... It's a forced... It correct, forced. correct. But even, even when it's a forced consent, but nevertheless, the fact is that there is a consent, and we look at it as, even though it's not wholeheartedly, but the fact that she's saying yes as a result of the conditions, that she's being forced into it, saying yes, she's saying to herself, okay, I, true, I have no choice, but in the circumstances, I'm agreeing. And that agreement is, is enough of a status of an agreement for, this, for the condition to take effect. So we say the same thing regarding a sale, even if a person is being sold to sell one specific property. However, the Gemara says, Mar Baravashi Yomar. Mar Baravashi disagrees and he says that the Isha, when it comes to a woman that's being forced to, to a Kedushin to, to marry this man, Vadai, definitely the Allah is Kedushin Loi Hava. It's not a Kedushin. The Kedushin will not pay, take effect. And the reason is, Chachamim, 
came and uprooted this Kedushin. Because who asa? Shaloika Haigen, the man, is doing something that's inappropriate, forcing her to marry him. Lefichach, asa imai, shaloika Haigen, so therefore Chachamim are coming and are acting also and are instituting something which is sort of out of the bounds of the Halacha Menatayre, that's not Kahigen, so to speak. Vav ke'inu Rabbana le Kedushin minay. And the Chachamim uprooted this kind of Kedushin. So even though Menatayre, there is enough of a consent there that it should take effect, but the Chachamim, however, uprooted this Kedushin, and there's no Kedushin here. So, Ravashi, Ravina asks Ravashi about this. How could you say that Chachamim uproot a Kedushin, that Minatayre is a Kedushin? And this is a question the Gemara asks in a lot of places in Shas, because you find in a lot of places that Chachamim are the ones that establish and say how a Kedushin should take effect. And Rashi, Rashbam, that is, brings here, this is the concept of when we're Makadash Isha, what do we say? Which means that it should be according to what it says in the Torah, Das Moshe, and the Yisrael, according to the way the Bezdin, the Chachamim, instituted, you should follow their, their, their halachas of how it has to be done. But the question though is, how could Chachamim come and uproot a Kedushim in the and the question is, It's understood if a person is being Mekadosh, this woman, with money. If he's being Mekadosh with money, so then Chachamim can take money that you're using for the purpose of Kedushin and say to you that this money is not yours. And we consider this money to be Hefker and therefore the money you gave her, it cannot be used as money of Kedushin. That's based on the klal of that Hefker, Bez and Hefker. And Chachamim can tell you that your money that you're using for Kedushin is worthless. So therefore the Kedushin will not take effect. However, Kaddish Bibiya Maya one of the ways to be Makadash Anisha is with marital relations. It's the, that act itself creates a status of Kedushin, if it's done Lashem Kedushin. So if a person is being Makadash this woman with Bia, so then how can Chachamim change a physical fact that you are Makadash? There's no Kayach of Hefkebez and Hefke regarding this physical act. So how, how are they stopping this Kedushin, Minatayra, of taking effect? The Atesis adds here a point in the Pshat in the Gemara, a person that's Mekadash Aisha with Bia. Till here, the Gemara was discussing a, per, a case where a person is selling, selling a property, and the, the seller gets paid for this. And the Gemara is comparing a case of Kedushin. Why is it comparing a case of Kedushin to a sale? Because just like by a sale, the seller gets money. In the case of Kedushin, the Isha also gets money. She's, he's being Mekadash with Kesef. But now the Gemara is bringing up the Kedushin of Bia. In the case of the Kedushin of Bia, she gets no money for this. The, going back to a property, if you force someone to give you a property, or basically stealing a property without you paying him, there's no, it, it doesn't take effect. The whole Allah is only when you get money in exchange. So why is the Gemara even bringing up the case of Bia here? So Taisa says, even in a case where a man's Makadash with Bia, she is getting something in exchange. A, a man that marries a woman, now the husband has the obligation to provide for his wife, which includes feeding her and clothing and so on. So she does get something in return for this. So therefore, it could still be compared to the case of a sale, where you get money paid for this. Mm. But the question again is, how could you uproot this Kiddushan of Bia? So the Gemara explains, Al Malay, Saravashi explains, Shavyur, Rabbanan, Lebi'ilasai, Bi'ilasnos. Chachamim do have the power to change the status of this marital relations, that it shouldn't be considered to be an act of Kiddushan, although the person is doing it with the intention for Kedushin, but Chachamim come and define and say that this is just considered to be an act of Znus, just a, a relation between them which has nothing to do with marriage. And Chachamim have the Kayach to define it that way because they, they're, it's not being done, Kedas Moshe Yisrael. Hmm. And therefore they uprooted this kind of Kedushin when it's being done by uh, forcing her. The Gemara brings a story regarding a forced sale. Tabi, an individual by the name of Tabi, which was a bully, he went and hung Papi on a kinara tree. That's one shot here in the Rajbam. And he hung him. Basically, he forced him to sell a property. Or another shot, this kinara is uh, some kind of tree that he actually forced him to sell him this kinara tree. Vizavin, and he sold it to him. He was forced, so he, he, he agreed to sell. So Rabbi Barachana came and signed Amidah. He, he signed on a notification that is written in advance to the sale. We had this before in the Gemara. The concept of a Meidah is when you write in advance a document notifying that whatever sale is going to happen in the future is null and void. So Rabbi Baba Khan is signed on this notification that the future sale happening here is null and void. <laughs> and then, then also the Ashkalta. Rabbi Baba Khan then also signed on the document of the sale itself that he's taking, that he's acquiring this uh, property. 
So Amar Ravone, Ravone said about this, Mando Chasam Amida, the one that signed on this notice before the sale, that the sale is null and void, Sharpa Chasam, it's proper that he signed on that, and meaning that it's, it takes effect. Oman the Chasam Ashkalta, and the one that signed on the document saying that he's acquiring, Sharpa Chasam, he also properly signed on that, and it would take effect. That's what it seems like he's saying, that they both take effect. So the Gemara asks, what does this mean? You can't have both. Manavshach, either one. If that notice in advance of the sale takes effect that says that the sale is null and void, then the document saying that you're taking, that you're acquiring, is ineffective. And if the document of the sale takes effect, then the notification of before does not take effect. So what did Ravonah mean to say that whoever signed on both, which is Rabba Babachana, that signed on both of these documents, that they both take effect? Says the Gemara, this is what he meant to say. Ilav Maida, if not for the fact that there was this notification that was signed in advance to be Mavato the sale, Man Ashkalta, the one that signed on this document for the sale, even though it was by force, Shaper Chasim. It the, the signature is good and the sale can take effect. That's what he meant to say. So he he rightfully signed on both. He signed first on the notification and then he saw that he's being forced to sell, so he signed on that as well. He can sign on both, but only one of them will take effect. What he was saying was that if not for the Maida, then this kind of sale that's by force would take effect. Ravona le Taimei, Ravona is saying this according to his opinion as we learned here, the Omer Ravona, tell you of his oven, Zvini Zvini, that when you force someone to sell, the sale takes effect. So now the Gemara asks on this, what, what do we see here from what Ravona said? Besides this, this point that Ravona is saying that a sale by force can take effect, Ravona is also telling us that if you now see after the document for the sale is signed, that you signed in advance, you come and tell us that you signed in advance on the notification, another document of a notification, that this sale is null and void, that now the sale will not take effect. But on that, the Gemara asks, Amy, is this true? But Vahomer Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman said, Ha'edim she'omru amana hoyu devareinu. Edim that come along and say, amana hoyu devareinu. What this is talking about is, if Edim sign on a document of a loan, where it says that a person borrowed a thousand dollars, and then Aiden come and say, "True, this document is is uh, genuine, and we signed it." However, when we signed it, there was no actual loan that took place. We signed it, and there was a trust that it's only going to be used if he borrows money. But there was no actual money that was ever borrowed. That's uh, what our money means. There was a trust there, but they, they're now they're coming and saying after the, we see this document of a loan with a signature that no, it never happened. So the halacha is, Ein Amonim. Edim are not believed to come and, and say this about a star that they already signed. Why are they not believed? So here there's a big arichas in the Rashbam. He brings from the Gemara and Ksubis that explains why they're not believed to say this. And the Rashbam says there's three, three reasons why they're not believed. If this is a star that we have it already verified as a kosher star without these Edim telling us that it's a kosher star, we know that this star is, is good. So then they can't come and... Uh, tell us anything different than what it says in the star. The star is a valid star without them. They can't come and tell us stories now that what's written here never really happened. They signed on a star that says that so-and-so borrowed a thousand dollars. Even in a case where without their, uh, without their um, telling us that this is a good star, we don't know that it's a good star. They're the one that is verifying this star to be kosher. So in the, such a case, th- there's a cloud that's called Pesha Osar, who are Pesha Hitter. If they're the ones that are verifying the authenticity of the star, they should be able to tell us what the circumstances of the star is. That it's actually a star that cannot be used because the money was never borrowed. But nevertheless, in this case, the Rashbam says it doesn't work that way. Once these Adim that signed this star verify that it's a kosher star, it's like they gave us testimony that what says there is true. And the rule by Eidos is once you give a testimony to the Bezdin, Kivin Shehigid, Shuven Chayzer Magid. You can't give testimony in Bezden and then come back and retract testimony that you already gave. So in this case, once the star, they agreed and they said that the star is a good star, they can't come back and say afterwards, oh, it never happened, they never borrowed the money. Furthermore, the Rashbam says, to come and say that this star was signed and it says in it that so-and-so borrowed money and the money was never borrowed, you're not allowed to do something like that because this obviously can cause a person to come and collect money that he's not owed. So therefore, since you're not allowed to do something like this, if Adam come and say that we did sign this shtar, even though we're not allowed, they're basically saying that we did something which is usr and making themselves to Russia. The klal is, ain't other mason matzme Russia. A person can't come into Bezin and say about himself that what I did was I did it as a Russia. 
So that's why in such a case, Adam are not believed to say about a kosher star that what's written in it is null and void because it never happened. Similar, if Adam come and say about a document where it says that there was a sale, that the property was sold, and the Adam come and say that, yeah, true, the, the star was signed here. However, there was a Mida. He, This uh, person, the, the seller, notified us already in advance that whatever sale is going to happen here in the future is null and void. They're not believed to say that either. So over here, the reason is, as explained, once they sign the star and it's verified it's a kosher star, so now they can't come and tell us stories that something else happened before, which nullifies the authenticity of the star. So the Gemara's question is, how could Rav Huna say that if you have a meida, I have a star of a meida that's signed before the star of a sale that we see in front of us now, a kosher the star of a sale, that the star of the meida is mevatel the star of the sale. Once you have a star that says that there's a sale that took place, you can't uproot that, you can't take that back. So the Gemara answers, let's just finish here the Indian. Hanemili alpe. When did it say that we have a kosher the star? So the Aiden that signed the star can't come and tell us another story that there was a Midah from before. That's only if this is just by mouth, that they're saying that before the star was signed, the seller told us that he doesn't want the sale really to take effect. And we're Adam that he gave us that notice. That we don't, we don't accept. Because the Le'asi Al-Peh, Umar al Because the words coming and saying and telling us a story that he told us that he doesn't want this sale to take effect cannot uh, break the 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 kosher the star that we see in front of us right over here. Avol b'shtare. However, if you have a star, a star meido, if the, you have one star in front of you, which is a star of a sale, and then there's another star of a meido that was written in advance. So asishtaro maral shtare. In such a case, you're not just taking words and 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 telling us a story against an actual star. Over here, you have a, a star that was written before. You have a star meida that was written before that in advance was written to make it clear that whatever sale, whatever star is going to be written later is going to be null and void. So in such a case, you're not uh, uprooting an edus that you already said in a star. It's not an edus at all because you already had a star that you signed in advance. If you sign a document in advance that whatever document I'm going to write later should not take effect, in such a case, the Maida works. The Maida stops the, the, the start of taking effect. And that's the halacha that Ravona spoke about.